So, I mean, I, 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 first of all, it's absolutely true. It's not monolithic. It's not one thing. It's certainly not romantic or idealistic. Uh, we all know that um, certainly uh, in terms of Western organized memory, we've been at this for, you know, two, three thousand years. And we managed off and on to live reasonably peacefully together, but it's only off and on. There are all sorts of other models like the First Nations model in Canada, which as far as we can tell was probably a little more successful and it is a different model. Um, I, you know, for me as a, as a Canadian and as somebody who's looked at Canadian democracy, I'd say that central to the idea of peace is, well, you know, the cliche is the philosophical cliche, which is if, if you're capable of imagining the other in italics, then it's likely you're not going to kill him or her. So that, that historically, it's the incapacity to imagine the other that leads to the loss of peace, the loss of the ability to live together. Uh, and y y you know, it's not that hard. You look at people who are about to kill each other, and there's always a sort of sudden incapacity to imagine what the other really is as a human being. So that, that constant projecting outwards to the other, whether it's the next door neighbor or the next city or the next country or the other, other cultural group or whatever is, is absolutely central to the idea of peace. So it's a, the peace is, is about imagination. It's about imagining that others actually exist. It's not that you exist, it's that others exist. And, and I suppose peace is that, um, you know, ideas like that Aboriginal idea of the, the great bowl, the common bowl and spoon, which is we all have to eat from the same bowl. So why would we be doing anything other than living together in some way? Uh, I think the second element is that, you know, peace is about restraint. So one is that imagining the other, the empathy, the thing that uh, Adam Smith wrote so brilliantly about in his good book, you know. Uh, and but the other is that just restrain yourself. And one of the interesting things about Canada is that at its very best, our history of democracy coming out of the great ministry of 1848 to 51 was all, it was all about Canada will become a democracy through restraint. Not because we were nicer or smarter, but because people like LaFontaine and Baldwin figured out that there was no way you could get out of the British, the clutches of the British Empire by fighting them. Um, so what you had to do was to uh, not to do, thi do two things. One was to uh, not be tempted into responding in any kind of physical way to any affront um, because you would lose. As soon as you went to any kind of non-peace, you would be defeated and you would lose everything. Um, and therefore, what you had to do was outsmart them, outtalk them, outmaneuver them, out hypocrisy them. Often, uh, uh, you know, the way you maintain living with other people is that on the one hand, you show restraint, uh, you don't respond easily. But on the other hand, in, in the long term, it takes a lot of intellectual consciousness. You know, unconsciousness is the first step towards not being able to imagine the other, uh, to being not a to uh, getting carried away about y why you're right, and 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 then finding that you have to do something non-peaceable, vis-a-vis the other because they're not really real. They're not as important as you. That what they want doesn't matter as much as what you want. And um, but in order to do that, you have to also be very very clever, and I think that. One of the big problems with peace movements is that they've tended often to be have a romantic or idealistic side to them. And the reality is that peace is usually kept not with a flower in the, bar bar in the barrel of a gun. It's kept by somebody who sees, if you like, aggression coming and is very good at ducking and weaving, lying, hypocrisy, <clears throat> pretending you agree when you don't agree and then moving out of the way, gaining time and space, just gaining time and space for everything to cool out and cool down. Uh, <clears throat> and, you know, Canada, starting, I think, in terms of formal political <clears throat> arrangements with Lafontaine Baldwin government, 
developed this this theory to the, almost the nth degree. And one of the reasons that the British and the Americans often sort of say awful rude things about canoes is because <coughs> we duck and weave and bob and stay out of stay out of the confrontation. And the bad Canadian governments are the governments that don't understand that capacity to avoid as a great strength of our civilization. 